I have quite a few questions about exposure and white balance. Over the years, I've tried a few different methods of coming back with the right white balance. Um, exposure tends to be purely manual. Um, I use a flash meter. Sometimes um, I get an EV reading, which I might go into in a minute. But let's just have a look at a white balance card. I can get this to focus. There you go. Um, this isn't a Canon card, this is YBAL, so you can go online and have a search and you will find a company called YBAL. Now, if you looked into white balance um, accuracy, what you find is the card company, whoever's making it, um, some card companies are making a real mid grey and some are making a slightly lighter grey. From my tests, YBAL are absolutely spot on. Um, they put a lot of effort into their white balance cards. Um, and I've literally, well, I used this for two years. I don't use it as much at weddings, um, more for sort of still life portrait work, but I did use it at weddings find the right white balance. The idea behind it is you can literally take a still photo of the card and use RAW um, and use Lightroom or Photoshop just to do your white balance and just pick off the card or you can do an in-camera white balance and take a reference from it which which works pretty well. The only thing to look at with this um, say I'm doing a white balance for this bag as a product um, and you were to place the card there when you move over and you come closer just bear in mind that you might have changed the colour so yeah it worked pretty well um, it would be even better if it focused Samsung's slow today wow it's getting there it does well. But yeah, take a look online. Um, you can go through Amazon. Um, they're cheaper cards than this one. Um, but at the end of the day, this has worked fine for me. What I tend to do is I tend to give it to um, the couple for one test shot for outside. And if it was a church, I would just give it one test shot just at the front of the church. Um, but the majority of the um, photographs will be captured with the bride and groom and what you tend to find is you just learn about white balance by using these cards and in the end you do actually stop using them um, I tended to swear by using it all the time and realized I was using the same white balance in Lightroom for the different times of day and in the end I just ended putting it away but it's very good for learning um, so I can highly recommend the white balance card. The second method is to not worry about that too much and you can use your exposure meter. Now you can put this in the image, take a reading um, and then you can pick off the dome because when you think about it if you were going to make a dome for an exposure meter you'd make sure that it was pretty neutral so you find there's in photography a lot of the equipment you're using um, they've gone to quite you know to the nth degree to try and make it a neutral which is what you're trying to do to pick off really. Um, the reason people have trouble with white balance when they're trying to pick in Lightroom is because a lot of the things are not neutral so it might look white but it might have a lot of yellow in it. Um, the things I found work really well I can pick off this light meter so I can hand this to the couple and get them to press the button and um, get an exposure reading um, they find it quite funny and the fact that they're holding this and they're doing it so it does make gives you a gives you a point of reference to you know make contact with the group and to sort of you know kids like using it as well. So you can give that to them and you then zoom in in Lightroom and you've got the neutral of the dome. 
You've also got the black body. So this axe is quite a neutral sort of device to um, pick your white balance off when you're in Lightroom. That's another method. Make sure we've got some batches in the 5D. Yes. So the final method is obviously um, you just choose white balance on your camera. Now, this should be the first method really. Um, let me just put it to sunny. There we go. So you can select sunny <laughs> and that just means it's forcing the camera to go to 5200K. Kelvin scales 0 to 10,000 um, with white balance. So you're literally telling the camera, fix all my images at 5200K. Now if you try that, what you will find is, for the majority of weddings anyway, because you're, you're tending to go out from about 10 or 11 in the morning through till maybe outside um, 2, 3 in the afternoon, for a lot of your outdoor work, you'll find that that method works perfectly well. Um, so setting it in camera can work very well. So I went through all these different methods um, and I used all the different equipment, I used the white balance card, still use it every now and then. And what did I do in the end? Well, it's quite simple really. I use auto white balance on the camera and I set the camera to raw. I use Adobe Lightroom. I take my reference point for daylight as being 5000K to 5500K. So I know for all of my weddings, if I'm working outside, I'm working within that range. And I literally pick the first daylight image, say it's the group photograph, so we've gone outside, and I just pick it. And I just, I just call that a day. Literally, it's a 5200K day. Um, or a 5,500 day and I synchronize all of the images over that hour which might be the reception might be for an hour and a half if you're lucky so an hour and a quarter for photography or an hour um, and if you think about it daylight color temperature within that hour this is very specific to weddings I must say um, but it's just giving you an idea of what I do um, the color temperature the clouds might come over the sun. You might have slight variance, but it's actually not much. So in the end, at 5,000K to 5,500K in Lightroom, I synchronize all the images. I, what I do at the end of the edit process is I put these images straight onto a USB and eventually they go on a large 50-inch um, screen and I just just flick through them um, and you start to get a feel of what's happening with white balance on a day and as I say uh, I think a lot of people are focusing so much on white balance um, that they're not really learning what the white balance is for that particular time of day so just paying attention to that um, and using the white balance cards will start to well, you start to see the same numbers. The same numbers pop up over and over again. Um, and again, this is why I use the same camera equipment. Because at the end of the day, once you've got your reference point of a camera and the reference point of a lens and everything starts to tie in together, um, then you've got times of year um, and you start to get a feel for white balance, which is what you want to do. Just going out all the time and taking references, um, you learn a lot. So the first thing you need to do, get yourself a white balance card. Then I would try putting it on sunny setting and going outside and then taking some photos. Bring them into Lightroom as raw files and then start taking references um, and start, start putting together some notes and you'll start to realize that the same numbers pop up over and over again. And then, eventually, you can put the white balance card away. Eventually, you'll put the exposure meter away. And you won't need that. 
and you'll start to work purely manually and you'll know what is happening with white balance. Hope that helps. It's more of a case of just telling you that there's no magic happening um, in the UK. A dull day is a dull day. That's a certain white balance between a certain few hours. And I've just worked that out. My idea with photography is just to get more hands on. So you're actually looking at light and color and exposure and working it all out. And you're not really using the camera to work everything out for you. To give you an idea, if you let a camera auto white balance um, through the daytime of a wedding and one set of images, um, they've got colorful dresses in and obviously the bride with the bridesmaids and it's more of a pink, um, it will white balance one way and then as soon as the um, groom comes, because they're maybe all in black or blue, and um, blue suits, blue suits can send it haywire your white balance will go another way, it will go all over the shop. So fixing your white balance and learning where your reference point is and working from that will give you consistency on the timeline in Lightroom. So what we're looking for really is consistency of exposure, consistency of white balance. And once you've got that, um, you'd be amazed how quick your workflow will be. I'll try and do some more workflow um, videos, but I uh, hope that helps. It's just a quick one about white balance. Usually say the odd wrong thing in these videos and people comment below. Please comment below on su subscribe as well. Um, if you subscribe, I'm going to be putting out quite a lot this year um, to help you. So put your comments in below. Ask any questions you like. If the questions are good enough, I mean, make them quite long, I will reply to them and I'll make a video if I can. So I hope that helps.